So a monopolist can affect the price of their product by changing the level of output that they produce. But the actual price they charge is always dictated by the demand side of the market. What are people willing to pay for my product given the amount that I produce? A monopolist faces a downward sloping demand curve as we see here in this graph, right? And because they face a downward sloping demand curve, every time the monopolist changes their, pro their level of output, it will change what people are willing to pay for their product. So as we saw in the last video, marginal revenue is always lower than price or the demand curve, which is where price comes from. Um, for a monopolist. And so a monopolist picture, a firm in a monopoly market has this picture for demand and marginal revenue. So marginal revenue is a curve is always below the demand curve because remember the demand curve is where price comes from. And we argued in the last video that marginal revenue is always lower than price because of that price and quantity effect whenever you change, change your quantity. And so the marginal revenue curve is always somewhere below the demand curve, and then you've got a marginal cost curve that looks like what we're used to. So the, um, the story for a monopolist is, as far as what they, how they decide what to produce, is going to be very similar to the story for how a firm in a perfectly competitive market decides what to produce. You decide based on where your profit is maximized, and profit is always maximized wherever marginal revenue equals marginal cost because you don't want to keep going past that point because then your cost of production is higher than what you gain from producing so that you're losing profit, right? But you don't want to stop earlier than that over here where your cost of production is lower than your revenue because that means you can keep going and keep increasing your profit. What you would gain from producing more is higher than what you at what it costs you to produce more and so you keep going so you always maximize profit at the point right before your marginal revenue dips below your marginal cost right so you maximize revenue by choosing your level of output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and I keep emphasizing that you're choosing your level of output because this really as we discussed in the last chapter this really is the only decision a firm gets to make. The firm gets to decide how much am I going to produce and then sort of as a sub question to that how will I produce it, right? The firm does not get to decide the price of their product. Who decides the price of the product is the customer. Once I decide how much I'm going to produce, the customer tells me what they're willing to pay for it, right? So the only choice the firm gets to make is how much will I produce and they're going to decide how much to produce based on what will in, will maximize their profits. And that's the same story no matter what firm you are, what type of market you're in. The thing that changes depending on the type of market you're in is what your demand curve looks like and what your marginal revenue curve looks like. So in a perfectly competitive market, the firm was facing a demand curve that was flat and because that the their customers were all only willing to pay one price. The market price is all the customers are willing to pay no matter how much you produce. And so the demand curve was equal to the price, which was equal to marginal revenue. So you had one line that represented demand, marginal revenue, and price when you were in a perfectly competitive market. And that's just because of the nature of the market, because there's so many competitors that a single firm has no control over what the price is and what their customers are willing to pay. So a monopolist, the picture changes slightly because they face the market demand curve. For a monopolist, you're the only firm in the market, and so the demand curve that you see as a firm is the market demand curve, and so we see that law of demand, um, the downward sloping demand curve. Because of that, as we argued in the last video, we see a marginal revenue curve that's beneath the demand curve. And so our curves, the picture changes a little bit, but the story, the, the, the process of deciding how much to produce is going to be the same. So first, you're going to choose your level of output. You choose your level of output based on the profit maximizing rule. You choose your level of output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. For the firm shown in this picture, that is right here at this dotted line where the quantities of sales is 1,000, right? 
And once you have chosen your level of output, now you can start to talk about what price you'll charge and you can start to talk about how much profit you'll earn when you, when you do that. So you choose your level of output based on where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You follow that dotted line up to the demand curve and you find out what people are willing to pay for the product when you're producing that amount, right? You've chosen your level of output. Now you take the price from your customers. What are you guys willing to pay? That's what I'm going to charge. So the monopolist will charge, in this case, $50. Choose your level of output based on where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Choose your price based on the demand curve. What are people willing to pay? And then if you want to know what how much profit you will be earning at that level of output and that price, now you need to know your average total cost. So we'll have to put the average total cost curve on here, which we can do. There it is. And at that same quantity, what is your average cost? Just come straight up from that same quantity to the average total cost curve and find out, in this case, your average cost is $35 per item that you produce and sell. So what's your profit? Your profit is the difference between your average cost, your cost per item, and the price that you earn, the revenue per item. So your profit is this box here. It's how much does it, do I get from selling each item? $50. How much did it cost me to produce each item? On average, $35 per item. And then how many did I sell? 1,000. So you have this rectangle that represents the profit to the firm that's between average total cost and price at the quantity that you have chosen to produce. So remember, the key choice here is what quantity will you produce. You choose your quantity based on where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And then as far as solving these problems goes, you just draw your dotted line all the way up from that quantity and you look at where that dotted line hits the demand curve, that tells you your price. You look at where that dotted line hits the average total cost curve, that tells you your cost per item, and your difference there is your profit. All right, so you find the area of this rectangle um, and it gives you how much profit you will earn. This monopolist happens to be earning positive profit because their average total cost is lower than the price people are willing to pay. But the picture could have looked like this. So this is one of the risks of being a monopolist is you're the only guy in town and you are subject to the willingness to pay of your customers, right? So it could be that whatever your customers are willing to pay for your product is lower than what it costs you to produce it. If that's the case, then you're a, mo a monopolist who, who earns a loss, right? And not a profit. Um, either way can happen. And it's just, it just is a, a, a factor of your production process and what your costs look like and what, whatever you're producing, whatever people are willing to pay for that. So you could be this firm that has positive profits because their average total cost curve is somewhere beneath the demand curve, or you could be this firm that has negative profits uh, because your average total cost curve is higher than the, um, the demand curve. If you're a monopolist in this situation, you probably won't stay in business long, right? This is probably a product that will not continue to be sold by a private company because there's no competition. Um, you could, I guess, innovate and lower your costs would be one option for, um, for making sure that you make a profit here. Or uh, what we'll see it later is sometimes these are, these are, this is the case in something like a natural monopoly where um, costs are just really high for whatever it is you're trying to provide. And so maybe the government takes over provision of the, of the product because, or the service, because it's not profitable for a private company to, to provide. So which one of these is true for a profit maximizing monopoly? Take a little time to, to think about it. Pause the video. Think about your answer. And the answer is C. So for a profit maximizing anybody, anybody who's profit maximizing, marginal revenue will equal marginal cost. And if you're a monopolist, your marginal revenue is lower than your price. So that's why C is the answer here. 
So just to recap the difference between a competitive firm or competitive market and a monopoly market. Competitive markets have lots of firms and lots of customers. The monopoly market has just one firm. In the competitive market, we're producing an efficient level of output because the price is equal to marginal cost. We haven't really touched on this, but if you go back and look at your, uh, at your graphs and things for your competitive markets, because price and marginal revenue are the same thing in a competitive market, right? Because the price never changes, and so when you produce one more thing, your, the revenue from that one more thing is the price. So since price equals marginal revenue, then price also equals marginal cost because marginal revenue equals marginal cost, right? For a monopolist, however, that's not the case. A monopolist produces a less than efficient level of output because the price is always going to be greater than marginal cost. Why is that? It's because the price is always greater than marginal revenue. And when, so when marginal revenue equals marginal cost, your price is greater than that. So a competitive market can't earn long-run economic profits. We saw that the, the long-run equilibrium for a firm in a competitive market is always where profit is zero um, because of free entry and free exit. For a monopolist, they may earn long-run economic profits because there's no free entry and free exit. There's no competition coming in to change demand or, um, or change anything about what's going on in the market. And so if they happen to be that monopolist that we just saw a couple of slides ago that has positive profits, then they get to stay there in the long run. They get to continue to have positive profits because there's no, there, no one will be able to enter the market because of high, in, high barriers to entry. Um, they also, the flip side of that is that a monopolist could earn losses in the long run, which would mean they probably need, they'd need to get out of business, right? Um, a competitive market, a firm can't earn long run losses either. So they're always at zero, which is better than negative. Um, maybe not as good as positive, but better than negative. Um, in a competitive market, a firm has no market power. They're a price taker. They just take the price. Whatever the market price is, is what they charge. Um, a monopolist has market power. In other words, they're able to make or set a price. Um, and again, I emphasize they are a price maker only in the sense that when they choose the quantity they produce, it will change what their uh, customers are willing to pay for their product. And so they don't really get to choose the, the price. <laughs> the customer is who chooses the price, but the monopolist can affect what the customers are willing to pay by changing quantities. Okay, so here's a question for you. You can uh, pause the video and think about your answer to this question. True or false? A profit-maximizing monopolist will set its price and output where demand is inelastic. So we touched on this before when we looked at how a firm maximizes their revenue when they have a downward sloping demand curve, and they'll maximize their revenue when they have a downward sloping demand curve by finding some point that perfectly balances uh, the price effect and the output effect. Now, for a monopolist, you're maximizing profit, not maximizing revenue. So maximizing profit has to consider both revenues and costs, not just revenue. So you can't just pick the point where you have... Um, unit elastic demand and say, done, I've maximized revenue and I'm done. Because that may not maximize profits because you haven't considered costs. So the monopolist is going to choose to produce at the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Will that be at a point that's, that's got elastic or inelastic demand? So inelastic demand is down here. and elastic demand is up there, the monopolist will always be producing somewhere at the top of the demand curve at higher prices and lower quantities where demand is elastic. So the answer here is false. The monopolist will always set its price and output 
where demand is elastic, not inelastic. 